Ladies and gentlemen, how have you all been doing? I hope you've been doing good. This is another episode of We Saw That. I am Javon. I'm Kevin. And uh, today we're going to talk about a little something fun, uh, a little something more laid back. We're going to talk about our top five animated films of all time. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure you all have your own list. Um, or at least if you can think back to, 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 to break things down to at least five, uh, write those in the comments for us and um, we're going to go underway. I believe that we both have honorable mentions. So, um, Kevin, what is your honorable mention before we go into uh, the nitty gritty? My honorable mention is Fantasia. So, oh. from, that, that movie is older than both of us. That's um, like 1940, right? 1940. Uh, so it's a traditional cell animation, uh, Walt Disney. Uh, for me, I just love the music first. I think that's that's my my um, impression of the film. Uh, it's fantastic music, um, and of course the visuals complement the music. I think brings all of it Definitely. to life in a brand new way. Um, yes, yes. In thinking about. A previous episode where we talk about sequels and stuff. Um, right. I'm thinking about you know Fantasia 2000, which didn't did didn't didn't hit me the same way. Yeah, but, uh, I think I saw yeah. it once. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it one time. Don't have many many strong memories of it. But yeah, the the 1940 Fantasia. Um, yeah, that's that is one of my favorites, at least for um for the traditional um cell type animation. I think there's some that are on your list that I like too. But okay, that is, but that is uh, my honorable mention, mainly for the music, the way it, uh, the way the visuals complement the music, brings it to life. That's yes. it. that's my honorable mention. And it's funny with that because it's almost like was it was it done for adults or was it done for kids? Because the the music isn't like um, your usual like whimsical uh, kids uh, scores. It's more in depth. It's more seasoned. And I and I even appreciate the different um, visuals that they put with it. Like for example, there was one scene, wasn't it, with like witches with a cauldron or something like that? Yeah, I think it's one that, of the final ones where yeah. it was like night not on Bald Mountain, and right. it's, it's all these demons in there right. having this demon right, right, party, right, right, right. and yeah. the devil is sitting on top of the mountain. And not for well, <laughs> I wouldn't call a kid friendly subject. Uh, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. So I I don't think this was written. this one was made for children because there's this thing and it's been mm -hmm. a while where this assumption that something that's animated is specifically for children. That's um, a good point. That's a good point. And we're going to go into that point. Yes. 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 That's definitely that that topic is going to resurface, I believe, through some of these. Uh, so mine is going to have to be uh, Shrek. Um, and I remember when I saw it, I knew that it was going to be um, laid back, friendly, goofy, and Mike Myers is already <laughs> crazy in his own regard. But for you to take Eddie Murphy and put him into something that's animated, I never knew that that voice and his comedic timing and all would, would, would make a character like Donkey so rewatchable. And things that he says, the jokes that he says, and things you can see over and over and over again. And every time I'm like bending over laughing and everything. And um, with all the sequels and everything that there was, um, it was equally as good. But the first one was definitely one that I guess started it all. <laughs> so um, I would have to have Shrek for my honorable mention. Yeah. Uh, so um, I've got the popcorn and uh, <laughs> a, 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 a beverage. And um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, let's get into the top five. Kev, you take it away. Uh, what do you have for your top five for your uh, fifth pick? For me, uh, that's Kung Fu Panda. Uh, yeah, I, I noticed when I looked at my list, I got a lot of Pixar movies. Um, uh, this one and the other one that you just mentioned, I believe it comes through DreamWorks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I I really really enjoyed it. Um, I thought was that was that Jack Black who was playing um, the title character? Yes, yes. Uh, he was I think perfect for that role. Yes. Um, and in an animated movie, um, something that I don't like that sometimes happens is that you have an actor who may not be known for voice work, right? But for traditional films, and sometimes what they do in an animated film, you can't really see them. So if they don't have a good way to portray their character through their voice, then it could right. be, well, we got this name. You like you like this actor, so go see him. Um, right. But I don't think that was a detriment um, in this film. There are a few um, animated movies who I've seen where I suspect that there's someone in here because, oh, we like that actor. Oh, you like Brad Pitt? Let's, let's, let's put him behind something. And right. then, for example, and then the voice work sounds really like mushy. Yeah, not really definitely. Telling. I don't feel that was an issue at all um, in this movie. I think everyone knocked it out of the park. Everyone, even people who I wouldn't necessarily associate with animated work. Um, I think they all did a fantastic job. Uh, and I that's really, always the best. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed uh, the story, the 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 path for the character, the main character to grow, and for the main antagonist how he did not grow. Um, that, that 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 was really compelling to me. Um, so yeah. I think all that worked together. And so that's my number five was Kung Fu Panda. Uh, Kung Fu Panda was 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 definitely unique um just the fact of using the animals in the way that they did where you have pandas doing kung fu when you have snakes and you have like monkeys and everything else was was very clever and you can do no wrong with getting jack black to um go out of his shell and 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 give his voice to to an animated product um jack black which by the way i believe just uh, had a birthday a few days ago um, I think I've seen uh, the first two of them, and by now I think they've had spinoffs and everything else. Um, Rotten Tomatoes has the first Kung Fu Panda at uh, 87%, which is, for Rotten Tomatoes, very good. Very good. Um, and I believe the sequels were, I think, a, a 81 for two, and I think back to a 87 for, for the third. So... It's definitely on the up and up and definitely something that I don't own yet, but I do need to get those Blu-rays in, in the library. So um, that's definitely, um, definitely a good, a, a very good one. Um, for myself, um, I'm going to have to go to my number five, which would be the Peanuts movie. Um, I believe it's got like a, a, a 87... Um, also for Rotten Tomatoes. But I didn't see it in the theater. Um, I knew that it would be so good that when I was in the, uh, I think, Best Buy or something, I just grabbed it on Blu-ray. Got home and checked it out, and it was charming and nostalgic, especially nostalgic. Um, Snoopy and uh, Woodstock s stole the show like they always do. But... Um, if there was one drawback, it was I didn't really like um, – they had the part where Snoopy does the thing where he's, like, flying in the plane. Um, and I think that little, like, like subplot or little side story or whatever it was went on a bit too long. But one of the highlights that I had from it was there was a dance competition that – uh, Charlie Brown entered, and he, you know, <laughs> it's not spoiling anything, but he won. But you wouldn't expect Charlie Brown to actually have a good moment at all until maybe the end of these either cartoons or movies or the, the, the shows or, or whatever. So it was just cool to see him finally be able to do something good. And also they had um, the little red-haired girl uh, that they used to have in the, um, the comics as well as the um, – the cartoons, you know, the, the shows or whatever. And so she was one that was just coming to his school and who, of course, he was nervous and not not able to get his words together to to um, actually approach her and to speak to her. But um, without giving anything away, um, I really liked the way that they tied her into the story. And um, 
it was it was really really a good one. It it captured the best moments of the original uh, properties, and um, I really appreciated um, the fact that they could kind of blow the dust off of it and bring it into the two thousand. So um, that's going to be my uh, my fifth place for um, for the list. Okay, uh, that's that's one that unfortunately I haven't seen that yet, and I know that you and I oh, we, okay. we grew up on like yes the, tradi the traditional <laughs> cell animated ones definitely uh, that's, that's on my list of um, things to watch. So I'm okay. looking forward to that. Um, so for me, uh, number four, my number four is How to Train Your Dragon. Um, oh so yes, another one from DreamWorks. Um, that's one where anytime something comes out because there's like three of them now. Uh -huh. um, anytime another one comes out, I'm on it because um, that was um, I really really enjoyed that. I like the um, the kind the kind of journey that the characters went through, the the human characters and also the dragons because um, yeah. because there's like a little there's the, there's a little character arc for uh, the main dragon who doesn't talk, but I think yes. that that character is just as compelling a character as the people who can talk and all mm -hmm. the the side characters and the lore of uh, the place that everyone's in. And all the different types of dragons that are in the movie, because it's yeah, not definitely. just one one stereotypical type. It's all kinds, all shapes and sizes. So that's interesting. A lot, a lot of diversity for a bunch of characters we don't talk, but are fun yeah. uh, nevertheless. The, act, the acting was uh, was good. Um, I appreciate it once again, uh, top to bottom. Another DreamWorks film. But that's oh, number, okay. But that's but that's my number four. Uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, DreamWorks is just incredible <laughs> to begin with. Um, How to Train Your Dragon, I believe, has a uh, 90 on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and I know it has several sequels. I think the second one actually beat the first one um, just by a notch. I believe it has a 91. Okay. And then the third one went back to 90. So like we said, anything um, 85, I'll even get 80 for Rotten Tomatoes and above is like, way up there and i remember for me um the first time that i saw it um it was so original um that was around the time that there were a lot of things going on with, with dragons um either in cartoons or um several movies here and there and so i thought that it was very original to give the kids an approach with it and to have um, the dragon almost grow up with um, the boy who um, trained him and who, you know, wind up becoming so so close with him. And I really liked that time period that they were going into, um, almost like the, the medieval kind of, you know, um, uh, barbarians and, 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 and things like that. So... Um, and once again, like I said, DreamWorks, uh, the way that it looked, the visuals are just amazing. So <laughs> um, I can definitely see um, that being in, in the top five, definitely. Uh, for me, for number four, um, I chose Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And um, I, I have, I didn't show real quick, but uh, here's the uh, peanuts. <laughs> but um Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse um, was another one that I didn't get a chance to see in the theater, but the second that it came out, I already knew that it was going to be so good, I just quickly jumped out there and bought it on Blu-ray. Um, believe it or not, it has a 97 uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and it's the story of Miles Morales, and in particular, um, the Spider-Verse is almost like this the way that, that time is altered so that there are several different versions of Spider-Man that all wind up in the same universe that Miles Morales, um, who is a black kid, which I once again have to admit, I really appreciated that because I read about him in the comics and first heard that they were gonna be doing this and hoped that it was going to be as good as it did turn out to be and even better. And um, when uh, Spider-Man Homecoming came out, I believe that they even had, um, I can't remember the actor, but he was supposed to be like Miles, Mor Miles Morales' like cousin or something like that. And I think he even, either he name dropped him in the movie or he said something like, I have to go and check with my cousin. 
that just gave you kind of a wink that let you know that something was going to be coming from Miles. But the from the the uh, the voice work, um, the way that the the animation was handled um, was really original. I really appreciated all of the elements of, of Spider-Man that you already know. And then having a version of him where he was kind of burnt out and older and, and more gruff and, and not really sure of himself. And, of course, they had Spider-Pig and um, a few different other ones. And I really appreciated how they all had to come together and fight for one common cause. And in doing so, each one of them had different things about them that they wanted to address and that they wanted to get over or they wanted to make better about themselves. And of course, by the end, it ended it with a perfect boat. So um, that was definitely one that I really appreciated. And also, I'm gonna go off on a limb and say, me personally, I think that it's the best Spider-Man movie that we've ever had. And so it's funny that it would be an animated movie, um, not just by Rotten Tomatoes, but also just by me seeing the ones that have come to pass and enjoying a lot of them, and especially what's going on um, in these new ones in the MCU. But being able to have a plot and a story that are easily accessible and have an ending that really makes you feel that it's rewatchable and enjoyable, and I really appreciate it into the Spider-Verse. So um, um, now where are we at? Are we at uh, number three? We're at number three. Um, just really quick, my impression on uh, Into the Spider-Verse. That's right, that's right, that's right. I, I saw it the week it came out with my coworkers. Oh, um, okay. Because they told me about it, because I hadn't, I didn't really know what was happening, um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it did. So I was like, okay, well, let's try this. And I knew that it was animated, um, but right. it, it blew me away. It drew me in right away. Um, mm -hmm. The part towards the end where they got into the different Spider-Men, I kind of wanted to see most of those in their own show because so many oh. of those characters were so very interesting to me. Right. So I kind of wanted to just explore that a little bit. Um, it was they had a, like a little tiny piece for most of them but it was, it was exactly good. It, it worked its way into the main story um, i found myself rooting for miles the whole way through yes especially towards definitely. the end when definitely. things started to look bad i was like no you got to get up you got to get up yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, and, yes and it's a cartoon but uh, I, really got, I, really, <laughs> I really got into it i really really enjoyed it i'm i'm glad that i got the opportunity uh, to see yeah. it in the theater because it was a very rewarding experience Definitely, oh, definitely. Fan, fantastic pick, fantastic pick. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, okay, so uh, we're at number three. Number three for me is uh -huh. Finding Nemo. Um, oh my so, gosh. So now, now I'm definitely on my Pixar track. Yes. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed that. When it when it was on DVD, um, I went and bought it, uh, saw it a few times. Um, when I was teaching, um, mm -hmm. I was teaching, um, a computer animation course and this movie came out a little too late after i stopped finished stop teaching but oh. if i had taught a little longer that would have been one of the ones i would I, i'd feature because in my class i think i think i um showed um a bug's life and something oh, else yeah. and because i was teaching my students uh how to use computer graphics i would tell them watch this movie Tell me about the shapes that you see in this. Oh, that's a great example. What would you do to make this mm -hmm. thing? So it's not just a sitting back and watching movies. Um, right. Because it wasn't movie, movies I happened to do. But this this is the one that, um, if I had taught for a little longer, I would have featured this one too. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed uh, Finding Nemo. I enjoyed uh, Nemo's journey and also Marlon's journey about mm -hmm. just dealing with the whole single parent thing and... Uh, the difficulties of you know uh living in this dangerous environment your kid gets lost yeah all, all of that things that definitely think many many people can uh relate to um, yeah had its moments of tension had its moments of humor mm -hmm. um, definitely <laughs> I mean, really, really throughout the whole thing uh another pixar movie but uh yeah that's my number three is finding nemo oh man and and, and then they added on what finding uh, dory yes which was also just as good. Um, that was very good. That was very good. Rotten Tomatoes has given Finding Nemo a 99. 
<laughs> and, and as we say right now, uh, we can definitely see why. Yeah. Um, with me, anything having to do with the ocean and aquatic life is already top notch. I've, I've been that way since I was a kid. And so um, Finding Nemo was, it was really a fresh breath as far as um, films that have to do with um, with the ocean and with the sea. Um, we had uh, a few here and there, but that definitely set the standard. And um, it also made a lot of those uh, little clownfish <laughs> uh, jump off the shelves in uh, pet stores all over the world. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that was, that was a, a very, very good one. And, um, oh, man. Especially the, um, I guess the designs of, of all of the fish and how spot on they were with how it really is in real life. Because they could have taken imagination and gone any way that they wanted to. But it seemed like it taught kids and adults a lot about um, the ocean and different fish and different things like that. And so anytime that you could do both of those, it's already spot on, you know. I'm going to segue right off of that, and uh, three for me is going to be The Little Mermaid. <laughs> um, the Little Mermaid has a 93 uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, um, hand-drawn animation back in the day, and it actually, um, some say, gave birth to the second golden age of Disney. Um, I remember... Um, when I first saw it, I believe that we've seen it multiple times together. Um, and to put a pun into it, uh, a fish out of water tale <laughs> that um, that really stands out with the musical choices. Um, whether it's um, under the sea, under the sea, under the sea, <laughs> or um, uh, what else is it? Um, part of your part of your part of your world. It's the girl. Uh, yes, <laughs> Sebastian stole the movie. <laughs> whoa, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you want to kiss me, girl? <laughs> but um, I, I I like the fact of her being um able to sing and all, but she had to have the chance of choosing whether to live on land and giving up her beautiful voice or staying where she was and never learning love and what it all entails. And so to be able to teach young people the chance of taking sacrifices and going for what you believe in um, and also being unique in who you are and being happy with who you are um, are a few of those tidbits that I took from it. Um, like I said, the soundtrack, you know, the songs and everything are still being sung to this day. And I think they're even supposed to be working on a live action version, which now they're doing with everything Disney. So I'm sure that's going to be um, remarkable. Uh, how did you feel uh, from back then into now with uh, The Little Mermaid and, 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 and how it's aged over time? So Little Mermaid actually should have been on my list. And the reason, the okay. reason why... Um, <laughs> So we got, uh, my family, we got this on um, VHS tape. When oh, it came right, right, right. Um, so everybody out there, um, ask your parents what a VHS is. Um, Once again. <laughs> <laughs> so so me, and, me and my sister, um, we listened to it over and over and over and over. Yes. Um, knew definitely all the songs by heart, but some of the script. Um, yes, just, yes. Just a, just, a great, just a great telling of a, of a pretty old tale. Um, love, yes. the, love the music, most of the soundtrack. Um, love the journey for Ariel. I, it, yes. I, know the, I, know, I know the movie has gotten a bit of a backlash just, just because um, she ended up giving up her voice for this man that she had yeah. met. But what right. you have to remember is that before all that in the movie, you know, she had her own dreams and visions. She, That's true. She wanted, wow. to, she wanted to go up on land just to see what land is like. Right, 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 um, right. Because she had found the things that had sunk into where she was. Right. It was like, you know, what's up there? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and the, the song that you mentioned, Part of Your World. Oh, um, man. <laughs> she just wants to know what it's like on land before right. Prince Eric even entered the picture. Um, exactly. 
Uh, so that adventurous spirit was there way before this man came mm -hmm. and, you know, changed all the plans, which kind of didn't. <laughs> but, right, uh, exactly. But uh, yeah, that was a, that probably should have been on my list because I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, we don't have we don't have the VHS tape anymore. This is the kind of this is the kind of media that um that degrades the more you use it. That's so, true. You know, ask That's your parents true. about that kind of thing. <laughs> it's it's actually a on limited, um, a limited use. So. That's, that's true. It's actually on uh, Disney Plus. It is. It is. And so um, I, I checked it out recently, only about a week or so ago, and it's still everything was still just spot on. You know the 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 visuals, the music. The story, um, the, the the little characters and everything, um, it's definitely one that people will be talking about, um, regardless of what the live action one does, uh, for a long time from now. <laughs> I think that would be a good one to uh, go to live action because yeah. I have I have seen some um, some Disney movies where the move to live action was. Eh. Not not that great. Yeah, exactly. But, um, exactly. This one goes through. I'm looking forward to it because it, it should yes. be, it should be um, something that isn't hard to do well. Exactly. It's funny that for both of the 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 third choices, it was both something with the ocean or something. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Great minds thing alike. Right. Exactly. So so uh, where are we now? I think we're at number two. Number two. Number two for me is The Incredibles. Oh, so, yes. I had so much fun watching this movie. Mm -hmm. um, and we did, we did a previous episode about uh, superheroes and yes. comic book type movies. And in this one, um, I think it did a very good job at examining what's it like for someone who has superpowers. Yeah. What is it like with them integrating with normal people? What kind of mm -hmm. stressors does that put on your relationships, That's especially true. within the family? Because uh, mm -hmm. everybody in the family has powers. And yes. they take the, till the whole movie to actually start working together. Right. I guess, I guess that's a message. But it's funny because it's all, <laughs> this is all animated. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely not a, it's not a G-rated film. There's loss. There's death. There's violence. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's true. something that I started noticing when, you know, even like the bad guys were getting it. And it's like... Oh wow! This, <laughs> this is not a G-rated film. This is this right. Is, this even though it's animated, um, this isn't like a. This part of the movie isn't like maybe a child-friendly subject. It's it's a mature subject, right? Uh, but I think it was I think it was handled very well. Like I said, I had fun um, watching it throughout. It. I wanted the family to work. I wanted them to finally get together to um, admit their weaknesses to each other, so that when they finally were able to, to come together, when they were forced together, but when they were able to work as a family, that's when they finally overcame the bad guy and all his um, plots and schemes. Right, um, like you said, message. It, 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 had, it had a message that was, that was easy yes. to pick up, but didn't get in the mm -hmm. way. Um, didn't enjoy the sequel as much. Um, okay. Yeah, but it, it, it took it in a different direction that I didn't, it didn't really resonate with me. But mm -hmm. uh, that, that first movie was another one that, um, well, I <laughs> I don't think I would have been teaching this in my class just because of the rating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, definitely. I mean, for, yeah. for, for where I was, where I was teaching, it would be G-rated only. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yes, that was a, a great movie. Um, another one that I owned. Um, oh, it, okay. Num number two, The Incredibles. Yes, yes. The Incredibles was, was really... Um, really different because it was like we said a family dynamic um and even the baby was like in on it or something like that um i haven't seen the sequel but i've heard mixed reviews on it but i still want to check it out um it's one that i need to add to the library and i'm sure that i will soon especially now that we've talked about it and mentioned it again um i think the last time i saw the original one was probably about a year or so ago um and I really appreciated the fresh approach at um, superhero, um, the dynamic of um, almost like what do you stand to lose versus what do you gain by um, using your power and your potential to help the greater good. And in this case, not just the world and good and evil, but 
your family and the people that you care about. And so it, that was one of those ones that really had a lot of lessons to teach as far as um, the value that you place on those that you love. And in this case, those that, that have the same um, gifts that you have, and how will you help them to reach their, their full potential? So, yeah, very, very good choice. Very good choice. Um, for me, uh, for number two, number two, <laughs> um, I think Paris, um, cuisine, um, and rats. <laughs> One rat in particular, uh, Remy, okay. and I'm talking about uh, Ratatouille. Okay. Um, real quick, I didn't say um, The Incredibles had a 97 uh, rating on Rotten Tomatoes. But um, Ratatouille uh, got a 96. And I believe almost like what you were just saying, it's all about figuring out who you are and where you belong. And it's also about finding a dream and chasing that dream until it becomes who you are. In this case, uh, Remy uh, always knew that he wanted the rat, <laughs> always knew that he wanted to, uh, to be a chef and always knew that he wanted to uh, be in a kitchen and doing something more than just stealing food and all. And he stumbles upon uh, a young man named uh, Linguini, believe it or not, <laughs> Um, and helps him by not only giving him a friend with who Remy also needed, but also showed him that what he wanted to do, the only thing that he ever wanted to do in life was also attainable, which so happened to be funny because it was the same dream that Remy had. Um, for me, anything with uh, restaurants, anything with food, anything with cuisine already has me. So the second that I saw it, um, it, it, it already got my full attention. Um, this is our Pixar animation. And I appreciated the, the, the life that it gave to Paris. Um, uh, seeing the Eiffel Tower, which, which has some, some um, some things in connection with my wife and I um, that we really appreciate. Um, actually, I don't know if you can see, but there's an Eiffel Tower behind me. Um, and I have a little Eiffel Tower right here, <laughs> just to add to what I'm saying. But um, in particular, I appreciated the, the kind of villain, um, Chef Gusto, uh, a, a little short guy who's running around and making trouble for everybody. And he was the one that gave a lot of the um, physical comedy. Um, and also, of course, at the end, he, it wasn't one of those things where at the end he finds out, okay, yeah, I need to go along with the good people and all, but they finally did what they had to do to get him off of their backs. And I appreciated how that happened. Um, also, I like, there was a time where um, the young lady in the kitchen, Colette, began to um, look more appealing to uh, the main guy, Linguini. And so Remy the rat did something so that the two of them were able to share a first kiss. And that wind up making them fall in love with each other. And so there was one other thing that I really thought was um, very unique. And it was the, the way that if, if no one's seen it, um, Remy sits on top of Linguini's head and pulls his hair <laughs> in different places, almost like a puppet. And that's how he kind of controls him in the kitchen. And I'd never seen um, one person or one character almost using the other like a marionette. Um, and so, uh, of course, that added a lot of physical comedy with um, Linguini trying to get used to uh, <laughs> how he's being controlled and he's falling all over things and, and, and looking funny and making faces and all of this. Um, I actually just watched this this morning um, which, which, without exaggerating, may have been the 20th time I've ever seen it or so. So it's like I know it from front to back. Um, I really appreciate it. And the ending, to wrap it up, um, there's a guy who gives, like, the ratings on the food and all. And his name, I think his last name is Ego. 
and at the end to not give it away if you haven't seen if you know anyone hasn't seen it but when they finally get ego to taste what remy and linguini have been cooking up to see whether he's gonna like it or not look at the expression and look at the way that ego uh transforms <laughs> with the way that he feels about the food that he's tasting it was really <laughs> it was really something of uh, something incredible um so uh, how, how did you feel uh, or how, how did you feel about about it Okay, so this movie, um, mm -hmm. I have read that um, there's a lot of research that goes on on the part of the animators oh. um, for some of their films. Um, mm -hmm. So before I talk about Ratatouille, um, okay. going back to Finding Nemo for a moment, um, I okay. think I read in maybe one of the featurettes for that movie that mm -hmm. the director had the crew, the main animators, like spend some time underwater, um, like on a coral reef. I don't, know, I don't know how long it lasted, but it was long enough mm -hmm. that they were able to get a look at these fish and other sea creatures, how they move, how oh. light at that level um, interacts with a, a, a creature, um, something that wow. might have scales, it might be mm -hmm. semi-translucent. So they, they took all those lessons mm -hmm. into animating the characters and made, I think, that whole undersea world uh, more believable. I think the same thing uh, happened in The Little Mermaid as well, in that it looked like it was underwater. Right. Um, but I'm pretty sure the same thing happened with Ratatouille, that the animators spent some time um, in in a restaurant yes. where, where the food is fixed. Um, Ratatouille, the movie, made me hungry. That's, <laughs> that's how well I responded to it. Right, right, right. Supposed to be enjoying right. things, <laughs> supposed to be looking at Paris, and, right. Yeah, young love, and it made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. This morning, I was like, "Man, I I gotta eat some breakfast." <laughs> yeah. It was. It was the, what they did uh, looked <laughs> looked that good to me. Maybe I, maybe yes. I was hungry when I saw it, <laughs> but, but I'm sure it it, it helped. <laughs> but uh, it looked it it was that uh, compelling, that realistic. So that, yes. that, was, my, that was my impression of Ratatouille. I'm sorry. Are we all <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, number one, number one. <laughs> we have arrived. Number one for me is Wally. -E. Oh, Wally! -E. <laughs> so it's amazing with that movie. Oh, um, man. There's so little dialogue on the, yes. part of the main characters. Yes. And yet, I mean, this is another movie where I'm rooting the whole way mm -hmm. for the main character, for his, for his main squeeze. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, this one had a message too, I guess, about the environment <laughs> and sustainability of resources and, I don't know, maybe capitalism. Okay. Okay. It's funny, along the way, um, I felt this movie pulling on my heartstrings. Wow. Um, because there are several movies from Pixar that I guess you could say did that. I mean, yes. obviously, I mean, there's Up, which, okay, yeah. oh, I'm, not gonna get, I'm not gonna get gosh. into that. Yeah. Okay. I felt, yeah. the, I felt the same kind of way that I felt they're pulling on my emotions with it, with this, yeah. but mm -hmm. I'm still enjoying it. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I, I adored that film. And that's one of the few films that I adored that mm -hmm. I don't own yet. But um, Oh, okay. But I mean, now I have a subscription to, to Disney Plus. So, okay. Technically you do, you know? So, so technically I, I do. But um, yes. I, yes. I really, really enjoyed that movie. Um, uh, it's, um, I wouldn't say it's, it's like melancholy, but it's kind of like, almost mm -hmm. like, almost like bittersweet, some of it. It is. Um, it really I, is. And I think that works for it. Um, like I said, the lack of dialogue um, didn't didn't get in the way at all. Right. It actually um, made it really original. It made it very original. I agree. Yes. Um, yes. I can't. I can't really say enough about it. Other than I need to go watch it again. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, now that I have access to it. Um, right. Again. Get your tissues. Get your yeah. tissues ready. <laughs> it, is, it is. It is quite an emotional roller coaster. I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it's. But it's a good ride. Uh, but that's, yeah. That's my number one. Is Wally. Man. I felt the exact same way when I saw it. It's like, I'm, I'm macho. I'm, you know, I'm not supposed to be, <laughs> you know, snippling it all. And um, it's funny because it reminded me of a movie called Short Circuit with um, yes. uh, where the robot was Johnny Five. Yes. Um, and, and it was almost like he was just shrunk down. Um, 
And I appreciate it, like he said, the, the little dialogue, because sometimes a script and dialogue can clog um, the emotions. Sometimes it's it can be in the way. Of course, it can help their scripts that, that, that achieve awards and whatnot. But when you can tell a story with as little words as possible, it leaves the eyes to focus and scan on everything that's being placed in front of you. And even when it just still stays in my mind, his little like girlfriend or whatever it was and how she, Wally! <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I really like the, um, the animation. Um, and I really liked it almost being like a futuristic type of um, tale that children could still enjoy. Um, I don't know what it is about robots, <laughs> but if they're done right, like C3PO, C3B, C, you know what I'm saying, R2D2 and all, um, somehow they have a way of tugging on our emotions, and I felt the same way about Wally, so um, I definitely understand where you're coming from with that one. Um, I don't own it myself, but I need to slap myself on the wrist because I need to. <laughs> I don't know what, I'm slipping, I'm mm -hmm. slipping. <laughs> Number one for me is Wes Anderson's uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Um, this was uh, a novel uh, first by, uh, let me say his name, uh, Roald Dahl um, in 1970. Um, and real quick, just like I had to bounce back last time, um, Wally had a 95 on Rotten Tomatoes. So once again, we're at the, 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 the creme de la creme, the, the cream of the crop, <laughs> as far as these, these five choices. Um, Fantastic Mr. Fox had a 92. Um, it's one of my favorite Wes Anderson films, and he actually only has two that are animated uh, in his repertoire. Um, the other one is The Isle of Dogs that almost, for me, beat Shrek as my um, honorable mention. But um, it's a sweet, lovable, whimsical little tale um, of a fox and uh, what's happening with his family and what's happening with um, him having to adapt, um, him facing change, um, his family and how they relate to each other as well as their neighbors. Um, and of course, they've got, it's got three um, bad guys uh, I guess you would say Bunsen, burnt Bunsen beans or something like that. They get like a little song that goes with it. But um, an all-star cast, as always, um, lend its time to Wes Anderson. In this case, their voices, um, George Clooney, um, Bill Murray, of course, uh, Owen Wilson. Um, I'm trying to think of who played uh, George Clooney's wife. Um, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, how did I forget that? <laughs> I saw her face, but, um, and a lot of other people, even in small roles and everything. And it's um, one of stop motion's greatest achievements, even in this era of, of film and cinema. Um, there are so many favorite moments for me. Um, in particular, they have a cousin that comes to the town, I mean, that comes to their family or whatever, and, um, his differences between his cousin that 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 you know is part of the family um, causes them at first to not see eye to eye, but over time, of course, they wind up valuing each other and, and the relationship that they have. Um, I I, <laughs> uh, I without exaggerating, I've probably seen this movie about twenty five or more times. Um, I've shown as many people as I can, it included my wife, and um, now it's one of our favorites and everything. Um, but there's something that, that is so fun, um, whether it's the comedy, the, the comedic moments, or whether it's just the simple, um, uh, the dialogue that is shared. It's, it's funny because it's one of those movies, like we said before, um, where the animation could be for kids, and the story is simple, but what comes out of there, the characters' mouths at times can be sarcasm, um, 
witty dialogue, things that are easily go over a child's head. And so it's fun for the whole family. Um, and like I said, I've shown different people. I've shown kids it. I've shown, you know, um, my sister. I've shown my wife. And we all get different reactions um, every time that we see it. Uh, there's so many little nuances in it um, that, that Wes has added. And I saw the um, behind the scenes documentary on how it takes for them to start with clay and to mold a character and move it slightly and take a shot and move it slightly and take a shot. And then they talked about um, Dahl's uh, impression that he had over them from the, 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 the source material, which is the novel that everything came from. And uh, it definitely made me want to check out some of the other books that he's written and also hope that Wes Anderson makes more um, subject matter or more stories based on his works. So, um, like I said, for me, Isle of Dogs, another of uh, one of, uh, of uh, Wes Anderson's um, stop motion uh, feats is is really coming up fast <laughs> into my top five. But um, for me, the Fantastic Mr. Fox is just. It's, it's so unique and it's so rewarding each time that I watch it. And I believe uh, we saw it together, right? <laughs> yeah, I saw, it, I saw it over your house. Right. So, uh, so, so what do you remember and what do you think about it? So um, I know Wes Anderson is one of your favorite directors. And, yes, and, and, you can see, and you can see why. He has a very strong style. Yes. Very strong. Without, yes. without being cliche. Um, yeah. I remember for that movie, partway through, it mm -hmm. started to feel like another Wes Anderson film. And I, I know he directed it. Right, and right. It almost felt like this could be live action with people. It, it oh. Um, but I, I don't think that was a detriment. I think, I think that was a, it was, it was a very good way to tell, yes. to tell this story. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it, like I said, I, I definitely got a strong sense of the director's style, which, which granted, his sense of style, of his personal style, is very, very strong. But it never yes. didn't get in the way at all. Um, it was, I think, it was a service to it. Um, done very well. Um, I mentioned earlier about how it's bad when somebody whose whose face is famous starts mm -hmm. to do starts to do voices, and it's terrible. Not yes. not an issue. Not an issue here. Yes. Um, yes. So, um, and though and though I recognize the voices. Um, right, <laughs> right it, away, it, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't a problem, um, and yeah. I could still enjoy it as an animated film where I didn't recognize the faces. Um, yeah. So done very well, because like I said, I, I remember when that doesn't work, but it worked right. perfectly in this instance. So that's a that's a great mm -hmm. choice uh, for number one. <laughs> Who would have known that George Clooney's voice yeah. would be so perfect for a main character in an animated piece, you know? Yes. Um, and then Meryl Streep, you mm -hmm. know, um, added that 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 just that warmth in um, his character's wife, and um, Bill Murray is always uh, <laughs> lends his 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 quality time to anything that Wes does, um, and. Um, I wonder if there are any more novels about this character, because while it's standalone uh, with what Wes did, um, I could see them having enough material to add at least a sequel. And I don't normally say that because I appreciate when a movie stops where it is and it doesn't have to be um, part two, part three, part, part four. But I can honestly say I love this film enough that if they never make another one, by the next time that we talk, with, and, and, and you know the next years or whatever to come, I'm sure I'll be moving up to thirty and forty and fifty times watching. It's it's one of a kind. So everybody, um, we're wondering now what you're thinking about. Uh, animated movies as a whole, how they've changed, um, how they stay the same, and what, in fact, are your top five? Sometimes it's hard to make these lists. <laughs> I took so much time and wrote so much and crossed so much down and everything, but I have these five, which I know I can stand on, and I'm sure you feel the same way. So um, like, 
If you loved it, comment. If you choose, subscribe, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Javon Holloman. I'm Kevin Battle. And we, we saw, saw that. that. <laughs> See you guys next time.